You know, one of the big decisions that Tasmanian teachers need to make is whether they're going to deal with student behaviour as a rule, formally or informally. If we choose the formal path, what tends to happen is that we refer to some sort of system or chart. Behaviours might be categorised in terms of red, yellow or green or level A, B or C. And the issue that we have around that is there's so much subjectivity around those behaviours. A push could be a level A behaviour because it could be just a tiny nudge, but it could be so severe that somebody falls over or off something causing some sort of serious injury. So we're never quite sure where to put those behaviours. We tend to make those formal responses even more complicated and formal by doing things like saying, well, how many times has that happened? In recent memory, how many times has that happened? What year level are you at? Where did it happen? And these complicated charts tend to spit out an outcome that we hope will be consistent. Of course, that's impossible when the input to those charts is so variable and subjective. What happens when we subject our students to these formal procedures is that relationship clocks out, uh, which means that our ability to leverage relationship is very difficult and, it's, uh, and it doesn't help us to be able to teach students to behave more appropriately. In fact, what it teaches them is that well, while they are being punished, whatever the severity of that punishment might be, whatever that system has decided to spit out, what it does reinforce of them is that they're not one of the tribe, they're outcast from the tribe. And the issue with being outcast is that while you're an outcast, why on earth would you want to demonstrate the behaviours of those who are in the tribe? What I want to suggest to you is that wherever possible, that you take a more informal approach to the way that you deal with student behaviour, which means that every single time one of your students does the wrong thing, Perhaps it's one of the students in your class or in your pastoral care group if you happen to be in a secondary environment. We want to confront them with a conversation. Those conversations, when they're conducted by somebody who's invested in you, who cares about you and who has demonstrated that care for you, are incredibly challenging. They're incredibly difficult to be in. And they can even be a little bit emotional. I know that my memory is when I walk up to students and say, hey, um, this isn't like you, what's going on? is that I've even had tears from year 10 students in that moment when they feel automatically like they've let down someone who's, who, who's actually invested in them. And what happens beyond that feeling is they want to take action. They want to do something to move on. And that gives me a wonderful opportunity to not only make it very clear that the behaviour they were choosing was unacceptable, but at the end of the conversation, it gives me the chance to accept them back into the tribe. I get to pat them on the back for making amends, for even if it's apologising, but perhaps even doing something that fixes up the harm if that's what they've done. I get the chance to have a little ceremony, a little moment where I say, welcome back. It's great to have you back in the group. And once you're in the group, the behaviours that have been normalised, that are culturally acceptable and normal in the group, are the ones that we start to adopt again straight away. It sounds a little counterintuitive sometimes. In schools, we do a lot of things that are very formal uh, to try and tackle things that are just inherently informal. I want to suggest to you that you take your formal goggles off for a while when it comes to improving student behaviour. Put some informal ones on and see if you can improve behaviour through confronting, through challenging, through engaging, through difficult, but through relational conversations with the young people that you care for. Mm -hmm.